Most cloud attacks that happen in the wild eventually have some sort of analysis component to them. Various security professionals and researchers break down these attacks and how they happen, thereby leaving a plethora of analysis references for other information security professionals to review. However, it's quite rare to find blogs or videos that go in depth into how to detect these various attacks. So in this video and possibly new series, I'll be going over detection opportunities at various stages of cloud security attacks. And I'll be starting with this report from Palo Alto Junior 42, a reputable cyber threat intelligence and research team. And for anyone who wants to do further analysis, this report is going to be linked in the description below. Let's get right into it. Getting right into it from the very first attack case, which is compromised AWS Lambda credentials leading to a phishing attack. By the way, Lambda is AWS function as a service or otherwise called serverless. So in this case, an attacker was able to execute API calls on the behalf of the Lambda function by stealing the Lambda's credentials. This allowed the attacker to execute multiple API calls and enumerate different services in the cloud environment as shown in this figure one. While most of these API calls were not allowed due to lack of privileges, the attack resulted in a phishing attack launched from an AWS simple email service that the threat actor created. So even though they might not have had the privileges for some API calls, they still were able to leverage another service for their phishing attack. And we'll look at that in a second. This phishing attack not only resulted in unexpected costs for the organization, it also exposed other organizations to extra risk as well. While the outcome of this attack caused substantial impact, it could have been greater. In this case, the victim didn't have an active SES, but if they had, the attacker could have abused it to launch an attack on the victim's organization, or they could have used a legitimate email account for the phishing attack. Due to the variety of cloud services used by organizations, it can be difficult to predict where a cloud attack will end. Going from cloud to phishing was not necessarily an expected path. As a matter of fact, this is the actual first time I'm ever hearing of this sort of attack leveraging AWS simple email service for phishing and it will come as a legitimate email because it's the SES service from a legitimate organization. So let's take a quick look at the attack graph and we do remember that they were not able to make some API calls due to um, lack of privileges. This is the IAM identity and they performed various enumeration requests. So get requests for logs, get requests for compute, enumeration for cloud storage, enumeration for IAM. And this is typically what attackers do at the very first stage of an attack. They want to see what do they have access to? What resources are available in the cloud environment? What can they access? What attack path are they going to take from uh, whatever data they get from their enumeration attempts? So let's take a look at the attack flow. So the attacker was able to exfiltrate the lambdas, environmental variables, and export them into the attacker machine. So an access key ID, an AWS secret access key, and a session token. So all of those things essentially are the credentials that you need to log into an AWS environment programmatically. So they essentially had access to an AWS environment using all of these credentials. The very first step was a who am I command or a get call identity in AWS. This is essentially just trying to get information about the account ID or the credentials that they stole. And in this case, an opportunity for detection here is enumeration, right? So one of the most basic things you should have for AWS detections in your environment is a who am I attack, right? Which in this case is a get call identity, right? If you've done any cloud labs or any cloud CTFs, you should be familiar with the STS get call identity command. It essentially gives you information about the identity that you have access to. So in this case, you definitely want to have some sort of detection in place to determine when someone is performing this or when someone who has never performed this particular API call performs that API call. So at the very least, you should definitely have some sort of detection in place. And of course, this might be a little bit noisy sometimes, maybe if you have an environment where this is prevalent, which I don't think it should be, but this is definitely one basic rule set to have. Some sort of way to detect when someone is enumerating the permissions in your AWS environment. Up next is IAM enumeration. So we can see here, they're performing list API calls for attached roles and role policies. So they just wanna see what permissions do they have, right? Um, and this was actually denied due to lack of permissions. However, you definitely wanna have some sort of detections in place for when a user is enumerating their attached roles or attached policies, right? Of course, if someone is trying to troubleshoot something, they might wanna know what, what permissions they have, right? But in a general use case, you typically might have an understanding of what permissions you have so if someone is just randomly enumerating the permissions or the roles or, or role policies then this could be a really good indication that something is going wrong in your environment and you might want to investigate that so definitely want to have detections in place for IAM enumeration in your environment 
the next is a lot more enumeration right so from the various list or get commands here i think this should have generated a ton of noise right and it says here that this technique is, is much noisier as the attacker is trying to learn the architecture of the targeted account so if you're getting a bunch of list or get api requests or describe api requests right for aws right you can see a ton of describe a ton of gets a ton of lists and it's for different resources right for ec2 for network for login for backup for ses and a bunch of other things if you're getting all of these different api requests from a particular user then this is definitely something you want to detect in your environment right if you have a user continuously enumerating various resources in your environment and making three four five six seven api calls per resource and even multiple resources at that this is definitely something you want to detect right so it, you might want to have a detection in place whereby an entity or an im entity is enumerating various resources that's one maybe just enumerating computer resources or enumerating login resources but what's even worse if you don't have if you don't, if you don't have detections in place for when this same im user is performing multiple enumeration attempts on multiple resources as you can see here this particular identity performed multiple enumeration requests on multiple different resources so this is definitely something we have in place to determine when someone is checking to see what they have access to because this is definitely obviously something that an attacker would do in order to figure out what they have access to in your environment in order to further compromise the environment so enumeration for sure then next this is also a really cool one i think this is pretty cool like whenever i see cloud attack techniques and i kind of like think about on-prem ones or window ones it's like really cool to see like how they kind of translate right so a backdoor in uh, aws account is essentially creating a new user in the aws uh, environment because if they create a new user in their environment in, they can use those new credentials from that new user to log in the environment right so that way like even if the credentials of the already compromised an entity is revoked they already have another user readily available that they've given maybe extreme permissions like maybe administrative access which they can use to then come back into the AWS environment. So it's sort of like persistence attack vector that attackers use. So in this case, definitely wanna have detections in place to determine when someone who is not supposed to be creating users is doing that. And even worse, if they fail, right? If someone keeps failing multiple things in your environment, obviously a lot of the things they've done in the environment failed if you're having multiple access denied permissions in your environment you definitely want to be able to trigger against that because that's a sign that something is going awfully wrong there so this is like i, like I said this is a really cool way by which like attackers like um backdoor environments right so and this was unsuccessful right so this is definitely something you want to investigate in your environment right so first of all you want to investigate when someone is creating a user should this person be creating a user in my in my environment if they couldn't create the user, why couldn't they create the user? So what is this identity doing in my environment after the enumeration, then a creation of a user? There's definitely something fishy going on. So definitely want to have a detection in place for that particular activity. And this kind of applies across all cloud environments, right? If someone is creating like a new service account or a new service principle in Azure, for example, right? Definitely want to have a detection in place for that. Next is from the cloud to efficient attack. So here we see that since most of the other API calls were denied, the attacker was able to successfully enumerate SES. And SES is AWS simple email service, which you can use to send emails. The attacker launched a phishing attack by abusing the cloud email service, which included executing commands such as verify email identity and update account sending. Now, here's something. If you don't understand an API call you're investigating, it's very easy to just do a quick search for it in AWS documentation, and it will tell you what that means. So if you go here and you look at AWS documentation, it tells you that this API call, what it does is it adds an email address to the list of identities for your Amazon SCS account in the current AWS region and attempts to verify. And next thing they did was update account sending enabled. And since we're already in the SCS documentation, we should be able to see this immediately. Perfect. So we have this right here. And what this does is enables or disables email sending across your entire Amazon SCS account in the current AWS region. So these are very powerful commands that this attacker is running or API calls this attacker is making. And he, the attacker was successful with this, meaning they were able to potentially add an email to the AWS region and also 
enable or disable their email, whatever the case was, in that AWS region, giving them the ability to possibly send emails using that email in that AWS region. And finally, the attacker performs some sort of defense evasion. So the attacker tried to hide some of his activities by deleting the SES identity by executing the delete identity command. So attackers want to try to sort of clean up their various nefarious activities. So they try to like delete logs or delete identities they made or whatever the case is, right? Now let's take a look at what this means. So deletes a specified identity. So in this case, according to what we're told, this attacker was deleting the identity for the SES service. Now, thankfully, Unit 42 gives some IOCs and also some additional insights for detection. And one thing that I, I think really stands out here is the IP address that this uh, attack was coming from. Now, so, so if the service is performing some API calls or interacting in some sort of way in your environment, there's a particular IP address that is related to Amazon or AWS that this uh, service is related to. But in this case, some of these activities were performed from a non-AWS IP address. Let's take a look at that. So API calls from the Lambda function are typically executed from its IP with credentials, including access key ID that were generated for the Lambda. Therefore, every API call with the access key ID is considered to be the Lambda function. However, during the attack, the threat actor was able to steal the Lambda's credentials allowing the attacker to impersonate it. All of these activities were not occurring from the Lambda function. It was occurring from a non-Lambda function or non-Lambda IP address, which was the attacker's IP address. So a good detection use case would be if an AWS service or if credentials for a specific AWS service are being used by a non-AWS IP address. So in this case, a good way they could have detected this is if this particular API calls, if these credentials that were supposed to be used for this AWS service, Lambda in this case, are being used from a different IP address that is not associated with this service. So this is a good way to detect when some sort of nefarious activity might be going on in your environment. And this might be a little bit more of a complicated detection because of the different nuances that might go into that, but definitely something worth taking a look at. Now, this very first video turned out to be way longer than I expected, so I'm not gonna go into the second or third attack case. But if you wanna see the second and third attack case, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below so that I can continue making more of these kind of videos where I go in depth into these attacks and also ways by which you can detect them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.